Hey, thanks for joining me today for episode 23 of Business in the Bedroom, a bootstrapper's guide to doing it. I'm your host, producer Jemmy, providing practical advice for the newbie entrepreneur. And today I'm going to talk to you about tools for time management. This episode is brought to you by Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this. One thing we are guaranteed to never get back is our time. And on the last episode, we talked about an approach to outsourcing your business tasks by sorting those tasks into buckets. You can outsource one bucket at a time. When you outsource, you definitely get some of your time back for sure. That is the whole point of it, of course. But if you're anything like me, you're still very prone to saying yes to too many things and (laughs) filling up your once now empty time. And now it's not so empty anymore. (laughs) Hold out your hand, slap it and say sternly to yourself, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. You don't have to say yes to everything, but working on building that muscle is a mental mountain to climb for another day. Today, we are going to focus simply on two techniques I have taken on to protect my time and just how I've used them, time blocking and auto schedulers. So this is a technique I took way too long to adopt myself, but since discovering it, I found such great value in it and wanted to let you know how I'm doing it. It's time blocking. Yes, you may have heard of this concept before. Essentially, it's deliberately and intentionally setting aside time in your schedule that no one else can claim. There are many reasons why you could and or should choose to do this. It could be for reserving or replenishing your energy stores. That is a big reason I do it because when my energy gets depleted, especially because I'm an empath, holy crap, do my migraines sit in. (laughs) You can also do it because you want to guard your creative flow. Let me tell you, once I started hiring people and outsourcing and freeing up my time and not having my mind's bandwidth taken up by all the things it left room for creative things. So that was really great. You can also use time blocking to make sure that you have time to actually check things off of your own to-do list and also to pay attention to that work-life balance thing that everyone keeps talking about. I hear about it. I think it's a thing. I'm working on it. (laughs) So here are a couple of ways that I've blocked my time. And when I say block my time, I mean literally going into my calendar on my phone and blocking out time with entries labeled blocks. (laughs) I mean that as literally as I could possibly mean it. So firstly, I have a repeating block in my calendar for each and every Monday. I do not have any meetings on Mondays, especially in the mornings, but I'll get get more into that later. And secondly, I'm in the habit of looking at my next business day or two ahead and blocking off time that had been open and available for calls and meetings, but hadn't yet been claimed. So I can say, okay, I'm going to make sure that this space is available for me. And I do that for a couple of reasons. First, if I have a ton of work and deadlines I need to meet for my clients, I have to make the time to actually do it. And second, I'm pretty confident that Though my clients often reach out via text or email for in-the-moment, off-the-cuff conversations, my clients have formed a reasonable expectation that my calendar the next day is already full, booked, and unavailable for more formal meetings. So it's not off-putting that they have to book maybe 48 hours or more out. They respect that my portfolio of clients keeps me busy, but they also have the confidence to know that they can still always just reach out for help in the moment when needed. So it's just a way of guarding my time. Now, there's another type of time blocking that goes a step further. And that's when you not only proactively block out chunks of your time from your day and your week when you're unavailable for calls and meetings, like I do, (laughs) we just heard, but you're setting aside a block of time for a particular activity or task. This can be done for business tasks and personal stuff, whichever approach suits you best or both. So for example, I block off time to prep and work on this show. As much as I love hosting and producing BitB, as I call it, (laughs) I'm also a total giver. So if I don't commit to blocking off time for the show, it would fall through the cracks because I'd never prioritize it properly. And I 
want to prioritize this show and keep it going. And it's something I'm jazzed about and it fills my fuel. It fills up my cup. So I need to prioritize it. So that's what I do. I block off time to prep and work on this show. And as I mentioned earlier, I block off my Mondays completely. (laughs) The reason for that is that I've learned the hard way that the inbox fills up over the weekend along with the to-do list. So if I have a bunch of meetings and calls scattered throughout the day on a Monday, I won't get to anything that's in my inbox. I won't get to anything that's on my to-do list. And then I'm behind the entire week. So I typically don't have any calls or meetings on Mondays, in particular in the mornings. I also block off certain times, and when those times actually occur during the week can fluctuate, but I definitely block off time on my calendar where I don't do anything but hang out with my son. Time is so precious, and it's so true that they grow up so fast, so I block off time for him that no one else can claim, period. And if you're a single parent like me, sometimes you have to literally designate time for your shower, y'all. So I literally have had entries in my calendar for my shower. It is true. (laughs) So that's my first time management tool, time blocking. And the second tool for time management that I want to share with you is the auto scheduler. Now, I know auto schedulers aren't for everybody's client process, but they can still be useful to anybody. And I'll tell you how to make the most of them. I finally decided to take a plunge and set up my own auto scheduler a couple of years ago. It was after a host of another podcast sent me a link to her auto scheduler for me to use for booking myself on her show. The process was so easy. And I loved how flexible it was in that I was able to pick a time that worked within my schedule. I could just look at the options available, the days, the times, look at my calendar and just find one that worked. It was so simple. But here's why the clouds parted and the sun shined down and the angels started singing me that day all. (laughs) So I was absolutely at the end of my line of patience with scheduling recording sessions, client calls, and meetings with an endless back and forth of emails. Emails suggesting this time and that day, and no, that won't work for me that week. What about next week? And how does your schedule look Tuesday around lunch? Well, I have a meeting between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. and and can call you right after. And, oh, you're on Central Chime? Oh, darn it. I didn't realize it. Okay, let's compare schedules again. And, oh, my God! (laughs) Bang my head on a table for real. I can't stand it. (laughs) I felt like half my day was spent just scheduling my day. I mean, good grief. So I decided to give it a whirl and look into what it would take to set it up. And it was surprisingly easy. So the auto scheduler program that I chose, which was Schedule Once, you can find it at schedulelonce.com and I'll include the link in the show notes, of course. It first needed a link to one of my calendars. So this was the first puzzle piece that I had to fit into my auto scheduler plan. So let's look at all the puzzle pieces together. Piece one, picking a calendar. So once I realized I had to link to a particular calendar, I had to choose which calendar to use. Now, I think my options were a calendar in my phone's cloud account or another cloud-based calendar program like a Google calendar connected to a Gmail account. So here's a hot tip. Consider this a master calendar for yourself and your business and your day and your life and all the things, okay? Choose a calendar that truly reflects your availability. For me, that was a calendar in my phone where I have my meetings and my time to do things for Jordan and all this other stuff, right? So that was how I chose. You had to pick a calendar. That's piece one. Piece two is setting up general availability, In the scheduler program, check for and set up a setting for which days of the week and times you are available. These should be the widest blocks of time that essentially represent your workday. So as an example, in my scheduler program, I'm generally speaking available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
Okay, so that's piece two, setting up your general availability. Piece three is time blocking. Wait, we've heard that term before somewhere, right? We've heard that. It sounds familiar. (laughs) So time blocking. Block out time in your calendar, this master calendar of yours that's connected to your auto scheduler. Block out time for when you are otherwise unavailable. For example, if you know you'll be jumping in the car at a certain time every day to run the kids to school or pick them up, or if you want to set aside a lunch hour for yourself, a gym hour, whatever, right? Block off that time. And as offhand things come up too, make sure that they are also added into this calendar, like dentist appointments or trips that you might have to take or meetings scheduled outside of your auto scheduler process. You know, if you happen to be on a call with a client and you set up the next call on that call, then put that into that master calendar as well. Okay. I also use it, by the way, to mark when my son has days off from school as school's getting ready to start here so that I know when he's off from school and he's home, that might affect my schedule just a little bit. (laughs) All right. So that's piece number three, the good old time blocking. Piece number four is adjusting your rules. So this means tinkering with the settings in your scheduler program that dictate when meetings can be set up. So those rules can be things like how long the meetings can last for, you know, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever. It could also be at what minutes during the hour are meetings allowed to start. So for example, my meetings are allowed to start on the hour, 15 minutes past, half past, and quarter till the next hour. It could also be, um, let's think, how many meetings are allowed to be scheduled per day, per week, or how far out those meetings can be scheduled. It also can be the emails that are sent to the people you're meeting with as confirmations or reminders, all that kind of stuff. In fact, I know I'm way overdue in updating the content of the emails that get sent out on my behalf. I know I'm not taking enough advantage of them, like incentivizing people to follow my social media and stuff like that. I can totally add that stuff into those confirmation emails and reminder emails, and you should too. But I digress. <laughs> and you can probably even set up different, depending on what scheduler you're using, you can probably set up different types of meetings for which all of these settings can be specified differently. So you can make it even much more complicated to suit your needs. I think for me in my scheduler, I have like six or seven different meeting types and they all have different rules. So (laughs) it can grow with you. Let's look at that. So piece number four was adjusting your rules. Piece number five is test, test, and test. See how your availability changes by adding in a fake meeting or changing a rule on something or whatever. And when you are sharing your link with someone, it's always good practice to click through it real quick before you share it away, just to make sure that nothing is amiss. I actually had a person come back to me and tell me that there was nothing available for like two weeks. (laughs) I was like, wait, that can't be right. Yeah, it was. It was because I had accidentally added in a three-week log event that should have only been a one-hour meeting. Because <laughs> of my fat fingers, y'all. So it's good to just pay attention and double check things before sharing that link. But speaking about sharing, there are a ton more ideas that you can use these schedulers for. So again, if it doesn't work within your client process, here are a couple of other ideas to, to work in an auto scheduler for you and your business. Now, obviously, when setting up a meeting, you can include the link to your calendar in the email for people to set up that meeting. But my caveat is to be sure to give people the option not to use it. Much to my surprise, I have heard and seen comments on social media threads and various sites where every once in a while, someone will voice a very strong aversion to getting an email with a scheduler link that they have to use. They don't want to do it. They don't want to fill in the stuff, which, by the way, don't make people fill in a ton of stuff to schedule with you. Like, keep it simple, sir. Okay, kiss. Keep it simple, sir. They feel the process is too cold also. That can be something, especially if they're like a a longtime client or if they know you personally or something like that. They're like, a link? I don't want to schedule it. What's this? (laughs) So not everybody. It's not So this doesn't necessarily work in every client process. So what I do in my emails and messaging is to say something to the effect of, 
please feel free to either suggest some options in your availability next week or to simply set something up that is convenient for you. And then I include the link there. That way they're given the option and most people will still choose to use my link, right? So that's why it doesn't always work for everybody's client process. Some clients and people on the other end are just averse to it. But that's how you can kind of overcome that little hump and make it feel like they're not forced to use it. But aside from the client process, right, as I keep saying, there are other ways. So you want to use it, auto schedulers and other, other ways, because there's almost nothing better than seeing someone who you haven't even spoken with yet. You don't even know that they existed yet. But all of a sudden, they've set up a sales call with you and pops up in your calendar. It's like magic, right? So here's some other ways that you can make that awesomeness happen. Because I'm telling you, it's fantastic when I see I'm like, oh, someone, oh, I have a call. It's a sales call. Oh, great. Cool. <laughs> can lead to new clients. So number one, be sure that your auto scheduler link is included in your link tree. So your link tree is something we'll get into with a deeper dive in a future episode, but essentially what it is is a listing of all your links, a single link that leads to landing page with a listing of a whole bunch of other links. Okay. But my point is if you use a link tree, all right, if you use one already, well, again, we'll take a deeper dive in a future episode of what a link tree is if you don't use one yet. But if you do, make sure that your auto scheduler link is in that link tree so that people can set up meetings with you even when you're sleeping. You also want to include that link on your website. It could be in the main navigation, in the footer, on your contact page, wherever, right? Just make it available for people to set up meetings with you. In fact, there may even be a means for you to embed your calendar into your website, which looks really cool. So, but caveat, remember, tinker with those rules. I, I mentioned above, you want to make sure that you have your settings set right. Because as people are given the option to just automatically start scheduling meetings with you, you want to make sure it doesn't get out of control. So perhaps limit the number of a certain meeting that can be scheduled in that week or something like that. But always check your rules. Always, always, always. Okay. Also, here's one extra little piece of magic. You can purchase a vanity URL that represents your link. Now, I know I'm getting a tiny bit into the technical weeds, but you can buy a vanity URL, something that's really easy to remember, like meetings with Sally or whatever, right? For like you buy one for like $12, okay? And you can have that vanity URL set up so that it forwards to your calendar link. And then you can put that very easy to remember URL on your business card or as a decal on your car or on your t-shirts or pens or whatever other swag you're giving out for things, right? So you can get a vanity URL, super easy to remember, and you can use it for all different ways. In other words, auto scheduler is not just for your current clients you're already talking to, but you can utilize it in a way to funnel new clients right into your calendar. So auto schedulers are awesome for all kinds of reasons. And with that, listen, it's about blocking off your time. As we mentioned in the last episode, you're going to start to outsource stuff, right? And you're going to start to free up your time. And you need to not be a yes person. And you need to block off your time and reserve your time and then create an auto scheduler. In other words, make things easy for you. So auto schedulers are awesome for all kinds of reasons, and they're just one more little tool that you can use in your time management. Thanks for tuning into the podcast today and learning some tools and tips for time management. Lots of teas there for alliteration. I love alliteration. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Well, I hope you join me as I continue these conversations and answer questions for fellow listeners on Clubhouse in particular. I am so happy when I get to hold my Dreamers Become Doers Club rooms and see all of the amazing conversations and connections that happen, whether it's about podcasting or about your small business or marketing or whatever else. I love talking to people and helping you go from being dreamers to being doers. So I hope that you join me on Clubhouse. Well, I'm assuming that you're listening to this because you're either running a business in your bedroom or you're thinking about it. So I and your fellow listeners want you to be part of those conversations too. So pop into Clubhouse, also join in on Facebook, on 
Twitter, on Instagram. You can email me, Jemmy at FlintstoneMedia.com, spelled J-A-I-M-E at FlintstoneMedia.com. And on social media, I'm at Flintstone Media. And you can also leave me a voice message at bizinthebedroom.com that can be included in the show. The plethora of options to connect awaits you all at bizinthebedroom.com. That's really the only thing you need to remember at the end of the day, because no matter what you want, you can find it there, bizinthebedroom.com. So please reach out to me and let me help you on your journey from being a dreamer to becoming a doer. And remember... Hit it hard. Keep the lights on. 